Welcome to Tangled Roots, stories navigating youth and family systems. Brought to you by the National Training and Technical Assistance Center for Child, Youth, and Family Mental Health, NTAC. Schools, juvenile justice courts, and child welfare services can be daunting for children and caregivers. New environments, unfamiliar instructions, and the need to trust new people can feel overwhelming. In this podcast series, we hear from those who've navigated these tangled roots through different systems. Each episode shares real life experiences of youth, young adults, and families who experienced trauma or living with mental health needs. Our storytellers include individuals from various backgrounds, offering unique insights into their journeys through these complex systems. In today's episode, Tondra will share her profound journey from experiencing sexual trauma in her youth to finding her path in peer support. Her experiences have shaped her life's mission to help others navigate their challenges. Please be aware that this episode contains sensitive content related to sexual violence, substance misuse, and trauma. Listener discretion is advised. My name is Tondra Poetic Sense Mosley. I am a 30 plus year peer support specialist or practitioner. I'm also the house manager for a sober living home for women with children. I am also the director of operations for MRM Consulting Solutions. Uh, What I want to share with you today is really why I have a passion for peer support work. When I was growing up, About the early age of four, I had my first encounter with SA. And from age five until 14, I dealt with domestic violence and incest. By the time I turned age 16, I had experience with with gang rape. It was very traumatic for me. It was a time where I looked for I looked for friendship. I looked for a place to to just talk, to talk through things that I was going through in my emotions. Unfortunately, for my mom, who did uh, that, she did the best that she could, you know, with the tools that she had, as well as my father. Both of my parents were in the home, and I couldn't imagine what it would have been like for me as a parent experiencing what they experienced through my trauma. Being equipped to be able to handle that, when I got older, I had to understand it. When I was younger, I didn't. It became part of my trauma as well. Um, So I began to act out. And due to me acting out, it caused my mom to make the decision to take me to a girl's home, to a detention center. I have to admit that day, really changed my life for the better. When she took me to the detention center, as she found a letter that I had written to a friend of mine explaining what happened on that particular night of the gang rape, the sergeant at the time, he read the letter and he told my mom, he said, you know, if this happened, she's going to need help. He said, if this didn't happen, she's going to need help. He said, I can refer you to a organization in the East St. Louis area that the state will cover the fees for services for a year. And so my mom took me to this organization called Volunteers of America. I owe, I owe all of my joy, my happiness, my, my resilience, my excitement of life. I owe that to Volunteers of America. For a year, I had the opportunity to sit with some absolutely wonderful counselors who helped me actually, I, I, I used to say, find my voice. I had a voice already, but they helped me to amplify my voice. They helped me to actually apply the value that I believed that I had in my voice and amplify that a thousand times. Once that year was up, The state no longer would pay for anything beyond that. It had to be out of pocket. But they told me, well, there is another program that once you complete the one year that you can come back as a peer counselor. I didn't know what in the world a peer counselor was. Sounded good. But I was like, what is that? 
And when they told me, real simple, it's just you basically sharing your story with people your age with similar issues. I was like, okay, as long as it's going to get me back in the building to be with y'all, sign me up, sign me up. When I got to my very first group session, y'all listen, my very first group session, I was like, this is what I'm supposed to do for the rest of my life. Oh my God, it was a joy. Every group session, I look forward to it. I look forward to not only sharing my story, but also being able to be there for other people who were like me, who felt isolated, who felt alone, who felt like they were too walking around with a label across their head. But once that year was up, funding ended. Oh my God, there was no more programming. That year literally was the last year that they actually had that program in the county. I was devastated. I mean, this was something that, I mean, it was a good thing. It was good for me. It was good for the other participants who were participating. But there was no more funding. There was no more funding. And it was it was a good thing because it also forced me to have to utilize those tools that I learned in the program. But then it also caused me to have to start facilitating my own mental health. In that facilitating my own mental health, I recognized when I was going through the program, I wasn't receiving funds. I wasn't getting paid to be a peer counselor. So I said, why not? Why not? Why not be that missing link for others my age and continue this on? So that started my journey. That started my journey into doing peer work (laughs) 30 plus years. When I look back on that and and I see where I am today, I remember my career goal was to be a nun. I wanted to live a life of servitude. Didn't become a nun, but definitely living the life of servitude nonetheless. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Tangled Roots. Tondra's story highlights the profound impact that peer support can have. Her positive experience with a peer support provider as a young person changed the direction of her life and her career path. We hope her story motivates you to recognize the lasting impact you have as a peer support provider. Find strength in your own experiences and continue to support others along their paths. Remember, taking care of yourself is essential after hearing such intense stories. If this episode brings up strong feelings or distress, we encourage you to reach out to a mental health professional, a trusted friend, or any of the resources listed in the show notes for support. For more information on evidence-based practices and strategies to enhance child and family mental health, please refer to the show notes. Stay tuned for more episodes in our series and visit the NTAC website to learn about upcoming events and learning opportunities. At NTAC, We believe all children, youth, and families living with and impacted by mental health challenges have access to the resources and opportunities they need to thrive in a comprehensive and equitable system of care. We promote access to evidence-based and community-driven solutions while uplifting diverse voices through inclusive trainings and resources. We are dedicated to creating spaces for providers and community leaders to gather, learn, share insights, and build a national support network. This podcast is supported by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, SAMHSA, of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, as part of the Financial Assistance Award SM-2008 National Training and Technical Assistance Center for Child, Youth, and Family Mental Health Cooperative Agreement. The information and content are those of the podcast guests and do not represent the official views of, nor an endorsement, by SAMHSA, HHS, or the U.S. government.